since a lot of people here for uh, House Bill 442, let's start with that. Um, we we'll going to executive session. Second. So moved, seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, just as a, well, everybody sees it. Um, both uh, Representative Pariso and Representative Merrick uh, have amendments to the medical marijuana bill that um, you know seek to address some of the issues that were raised in the public hearing and raised by the outside groups. Um, I have, I think, made it clear to all the sponsors of the bill that I am, you know, as one person who is consistently, whether I was in the House here, the House in D.C., or now here in the Senate, not voted to support medical marijuana, but one person willing to consider uh, changing my position, changing my view, if some of the problems are ironed out. And so I think um, I would look for a motion to re-refer the bill, and then as we talk about it for the next few minutes, to sort of give an outline to the sponsors of what some of those issues are. Uh, I would say that one issue, and I'll just address it uh, right off the top, is that uh, Governor Lynch remains unconvinced that um, this is an appropriate public policy. So and part of the issue is either getting 16 votes here to override a veto or um, convincing Governor Lynch, and I think to get his support, and quite frankly, uh, my support, I, I, I'm going to want to see at least some uh, movement on the part of law enforcement to uh, maybe not supporting the bill, but perhaps neutral to it. Um, I'm not saying that is hard and fast, but I, and, and I think um, both Representative Carrizo and Merrick in their amendments tried to address it. So what I would, I would urge is if this motion prevails that um, the sponsors of the bill work with the committee, but take it really upon themselves to work with those entities to try and further refine it, tighten it up somewhat more. You've made major progress from the last bill. And then I think you'll see that folks like myself will be willing to say this is medicine that can be safely distributed uh, to patients in need uh, without some of the ramifications that are negative that I think we heard the law enforcement community uh, talk about. So that would be my hope if that motion prevails. Other comments? Um, I, I guess in a pragmatic sense, you spent a lot more time with this over the years than, than we have. But I think they've really done a great job and they've walked so far down the road to try and create something that truly is manageable as a medicine, incredibly focused. I ask, and I guess I ask, what more could they possibly do? And do we really think that law enforcement is ever going to find some level of comfort or enough to make the governor or the majority comfortable or are we close enough there today? Um, I don't know. I, I know from my conversations, I spoke with the governor a week ago, um, and he indicated that um, you know he still has significant concerns, though like me recognizes that the sponsors have made you know major efforts uh, to tighten it up and uh, to make sure that it's safe and secure. But I think without really putting words in his mouth, I think it's safe to say that he still has some of those concerns. And I think that that, given the, the reality of requiring 16 votes, is uh, also an issue. That's the lousy. Um, it's reading all the two amendments. I think there's still a little bit more work to be done. But I think it can be accomplished. And uh, if it goes back to the committee to give it more time to work on this, I think something can come up. It would be acceptable that uh, we can get enough votes to get it to pass or overturn if necessary. So I, I would be in favor of uh, making a motion to be referred. Senator California. Um, a couple things. We 
earlier that you have mentioned, Senator, uh, that I just need to uh, respond to. Uh, I have known the sponsor of this bill uh, and her efforts in working with this in a very collaborative, broad spectrum. Many, many people to bring this on board and, and also the intent of her legislation, which truly uh, addresses the issue of people who uh, are dealing with some incredible situations and mostly pain uh, and with illness and that this is something we talked before about medical evidence, but it has been evidence that this actually has an effect and brings quality of life to people. So you know, we can put that right on the table. This is something that we can do as a group today, as a committee, to say yes to that. Um, and uh, um, I think uh, the testimony that we heard about that was compelling. Like the people in this situation, a lot of things that we can not do as legislators. But I feel that if we can provide some better quality of life to people who are suffering, and that we can do that, it's pretty wonderful. And I would like to do that. Uh, to look at re referring to kind of your issues, I'm concerned um, that. We are just putting the question. I have never seen anyone work as hard as this representative on trying to get any issues or questions that were unresolved to have to resolve. I cannot imagine that we can do that much more to answer some of the questions that we at this point. I, I don't know what the governor is thinking. And I don't think that it has been our goal as legislators in the Senate to base our decisions necessarily on what the governor is going to do. My sense is that the governor looks to us first and to what we're doing and our leadership here on these issues, which helps him out in his decision. And I think it probably looks to that first, and so I really want to turn that around. Um, you know, I always think that we had asked two years ago, we were in a year ago, but it wasn't this. I'm not sure I could have supported it. But like as you said, these sponsors have done an amazing job. They have on and above the issue itself. And I think we all agree that it's a real, it's a very real issue. That there's an opportunity to truly help people. But the flip on that, obviously, is that we have an obligation to protect everyone and make sure it's good legislation. And they've really come very, very far. I mean, I'm, I'm amazed that they don't know what everyone's going to do. And so it raises the question, and I completely respect Chairman Joe Bottoms, where the governor is or not, and where enforcement is or not. Um, and I guess the point of that question, are, are we close enough now to move forward? Technology needs to go to committee conference. Or do you really feel strongly that you're going to have to defer to this in the sense that because you've got better experience than me, the worst professional legislators? Is it ready for time? My feeling is personally at this point, I'm pretty far down that road. Not like that wasn't even close to a year ago, and I, and I readily admit that. Um, what do you guys think? Still think it's not there? Larry, any luck? <laughs> you haven't both weighed in yet on the day? Well, I, I, I guess he would continue to us. Uh, Kelly had to say about the governor last week, the governor, but I, I guess I wish I would have kept a little bit more. I mean, this is so good. And why is the governor not on board? Well, it seems like we kind of feel that uh, we had these, these, these senators, just uh, somebody from the attorney general's office in there. Works for the governor. She's not with it. Colonel of the state police, I'm not with it. They work for the governor. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just unfortunate. And, you know, a lot of us would be going out there on a limb for this very reason. And uh, to go out there on a limb and then not, not have it happen like it's really unfortunate. That's the only mm -hmm. question that still remains about medical marijuana. How is it manufactured? Who's manufacturing it? How does it get distributed? Who distributes it? 
in my mind, it's clear that medical marijuana works for some people in the body, and they should have it. My own question is, how and who delivers it? And you still feel that they haven't addressed it well enough to truly, I mean, at the core, we understand this is a real big political issue, and it's a social issue, it's a safety issue, it's complex. It sure is. And if you're not 100% there, if you're not 100% there, you can't support it. But if you're 80% there, you're right. We talked about the we refer. I mean, that close. My, my, my thought is like the others. If we don't do enough work on it, if, if we pass this out of committee today, and it goes, and the government won't accept it, then what, what have we really accomplished? But if we take our time to really go through this a little bit more, then maybe the next time we'll have something that's presented in all parties. May not be totally happy with it, but can accept it. But I just don't want to set ourselves up for failure. Need us. Uh, let me recognize the sponsor for just a moment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, yeah. Senator okay. Kelly brought up a very important point. The governor said to me, and has said to me several times, if the Senate supports this, I will too. That doesn't mean he will sign it, but that was something he had said to me several times. In fact, he said it last time, and, um, and then, no, actually, I apologize, he did not say it this time. This, this time he has said that. I also spoke with the governor's legal counsel, uh, Jeff Myers, last night. And the sense that I got, and I'm not putting words in his mouth, but a very strong sense that I got from him was that if we had addressed every concern the governor had, which we have done in both the bill itself and the amendments, um, and we have law enforcement officials who are on board unofficially, because in fact they can't come out and speak directly, that happened once and that particular law enforcement official was fired. Um, but that, there's a chance that he, there's no more talk about him vetoing it. Um, it's now looking at, because there isn't anything more, Senator DeBoy, that we can do with this bill. This bill, my husband said to me, this bill is going to kill you. And I said to him, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. You couldn't get a, 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 a Sherman tank through this bill. It is that strong and that tight. We have been working for six or seven years, six years that I've been working on it, and beyond that, several years that other sponsors have been working on it. I believe in my heart that this is the opportunity for this Senate to say, we believe that this is a good, compassionate bill that makes sense for us to do, and send that message to the governor himself. Because there's nothing more in this bill we can do. We have had a committee of conference, bipartisan, full support. It passed, I, I, it over, we overrode a veto last time in the House. We overrode, we came two votes from overriding that veto in the Senate last time. And this bill now addresses every other concern that he had in that veto message. It also talks about the centers, the control, the distribution, the growing is all confined and controlled by the center, one center. And now hospitals in this amendment will have the option, any hospital in this state will have the option of dispensing it, of having, working with the Department of Health and Human Services. And I don't know, I can't pretend to know how that will happen. But I can tell you one thing, I will not drop this nor will Representative Griazzo, nor will anybody else. We will work directly with the department, with law enforcement officials, with the AG's office to make this happen. One last point, I met with the Coas County Chiefs of Police last weekend, or last Friday. Before then they had come out, they had come out with a statement in previous years uh, in uh, not supporting this legislation. The chief of the chiefs, I don't know what his title exactly is, got up after I had presented this and answered questions and said to this group, in the past we have not supported this. However, based on this information, I will leave it up to you to use your own best judgment as to how you feel about this. He did not make a commitment one way or the other. I have talked unofficially 
to at least 25 different law enforcement officials and agents around the state. And every single one has said to me, this is the right thing to do. We just can't come out publicly and say that. And I don't understand that thinking, but I do understand that they believe it because everybody has been personally touched in one way or the other. Putting this off for six months and re-referring it with all due respect, and I have tremendous respect for all of you, will not change what's in here and cannot make it any better because to make any more changes will make it obsolete. It will be impossible to do anything and to offer help to this small group of people where nothing else can help them. And that's what this is about. And one more statement, if I might. And may I allow, may I ask that Kirk O'Neill make one quick statement that he just found out some very important information that might. Okay. Thank you. Thank uh, you so much. I'll be very brief. Um, I think it's seldom that a legislative body has an opportunity to pass legislation that is both compassionate and fiscally conservative. And this is legislation like that. What I have been talking with other people who do what I do, advocate for medical marijuana patients all around the country. Um, and they are very impressed with this bill. They have had difficulties in other states. They know that what we've done is to look at those other states and take the best practices from those states and incorporate them in the bill. And a lot of those folks have expressed that this is language and a system that they would like to put in place even in states that have already allowed medical marijuana, that they'd like to use this as a blueprint to sort of tighten up their laws and be able to do a better job for their citizens and their constituents. I think that you have a very strong opportunity in front of you. And I think it's up to you whether or not you pick that opportunity up or whether you leave it on the table. At some level, I've just gotten a level of concern mm -hmm. when on one side we're saying, it's so incredibly close, but there's still some hanging chads, if you want to call it. There's still a couple of issues. If you have just indicated that it's done, it's at the end of the road, there's nothing else that can be done to try and alleviate the concerns of law enforcement or the government. Is that really where you are? <coughs> or are there other things that I'm not, don't want to walk too far down the road in the, in the negotiation, right. Right. but you spend more time on this than you are. You work really at so looking at other states, looking at where you are, looking at the concerns of law enforcement, the concerns of the government, mm -hmm. and still the concerns of a lot of senators today. Mm -hmm. Are you done? Is this it? Or are there other things that there are concerns you hear that could happen? And I appreciate the question. Um, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that any bill is ever done. And we all know that. Every bill, every piece of legislation, every law, can always be improved upon. But I can tell you that I don't think there's a bill in existence, and there may be, I mean, my, in my three terms of experience that has been vetted so much, that has been put through the ringer. Um, in the amendment, law enforcement has oversight now. It wasn't clear in the bill. Law enforcement has oversight, at, uh, oversight as to where a treatment center is going to be located, as to the, you know, there's public opinion. Law enforcement has all of the control they have ever had, and then some. We have removed some of the issues for law enforcement officials. We have removed the, um, the possibility of more uh, of, the, of the purchasing and acquiring of marijuana on the streets from patients' families. So in fact, we have actually reduced the burden to law enforcement officials. Um, we have made it so that a patient can only access either the hospital or the, or the treatment center, which by the way will only be one now, only one treatment center, by appointment only, which was not in there and is not in any other bill in the country. There, there are requirements and regulations in this bill that you will not find in any other state. And yet I talked to the governor of Vermont and I asked him about the issues that they have. And their bill, and, and some of this came from Vermont's bill and some from Maine. And then we took it and went further. And he said, his words were, law enforcement is not an issue. Those were this, the, the words of the governor, not this present governor, but the governor that, that I met two years ago when I was working initially on this bill. And there's, their legislation isn't as strict as this, isn't as restrictive. 
as this legislation. To answer your question, I believe we have done our homework. I believe that this bill, I, I, I can't imagine anywhere else. Every question, every concern the governor has had, we have addressed. We have made those changes necessary. And even at the expense of uh, access to the patients. In other words, it's going to be harder for these patients to access what they so desperately need. I don't believe, and I'll tell you one thing, the, the state is not responsible for the funding of this. This is all going to be by donations, and we have people lining up to donate to get this um, moving. I do believe by re-referring it, it will cost the state money, because I live two hours north of here, and it's very costly for me to drive back and forth. And there are other people who have to drive back and forth and sign in and be here and use the, the state's time and money to accomplish, I'm not sure what. It's here. It gives control <coughs> to employers. It gives control to landlords. It, and yet it offers that hope and that little bit to those few desperately ill patients. You, you can't set up these on a corner. You can't walk in with a doctor's note that says you have back pain. It doesn't work that way. I, I don't believe we can do As I said, every law can always be tweaked. I'm not sure where we can tweak this anymore.
All right. So the ought to pass motion prevails three to two. Uh, Senator Kelly, do you want to take it to the floor? Ah, we didn't have a those opposed. <laughs> so ought to pass prevails three to two. Um, we'll go to the floor as three to two. As ought to pass as the 